Hello there, I'm Michelle Beauchamp, owner of The Champ Group and executive director on the John Maxwell team. I am your host for Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. Our show is called Crossing Bridges, where we discuss women in business and how we started in one part of the bridge and the steps that we have to take, the obstacles that we need to overcome, to get to where we want to be. I am so happy to have a very special guest on today. She is a woman that I really admire. Her name is Denise Hendon. Denise is the owner of Managence Consulting. She is a certified coach, she's a PhD, but the most wonderful quality about Denise is that she is such a woman of character. Denise, thank you. Thank you so much, really, for saying yes. You travel so much, you are very busy, and you said yes to the opportunity for us to be able to discuss the important topic of leadership and personal leadership and share with our audience about some steps that you've taken to cross bridges to get to where you want to go. Well, first of all, Michelle, thank you so much for having me. I was really honored that you would invite me to participate in this interview with you. So thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and the admiration um, that you said you have for me is equal. In terms of, I have a great admiration for you as well. Ah, thank you so much, Denise. So, so um, you asked how bridges that I've crossed. Well, so, first, what is Managence Consulting? Because they probably like Managence Consulting. What is that? So Managents Consulting and I'll add coaching yes, is, yes. is a firm that does customized, customized leadership development, including coaching leaders and teams. We do organizational culture change initiatives, and we do strategic thinking and planning. Okay. And Say that I'm, again, because <clears throat> there were three things. Three things. Customized leadership development uh -huh. initiatives, including coaching individual leaders and teams, uh -huh. designing and guiding organizational culture change management initiatives, and strategic thinking and planning. Okay. And our clients are primarily nonprofit organizations in the affordable housing industry, organizations working with people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And we work with some other kinds of organizations as well, but okay. those are our primary, primary organ ones? Okay. organizations. Okay, so there may be some nonprofits watching, and they may say, you know, our organization could use some help. So now they know that Managed's Consulting and Coaching is a company that they should call. Yes. Okay, so that's good. Now here's what I want to start off by talking about, because you said crossing bridges. How did you start, Denise? You had a really interesting story about how you even got started with what did you do before that, and how did you transition across the bridge to management consulting? Tell us about that. Thank you. So we are actually celebrating 19 years. That is with management consulting and coaching. That's uh, a lot in of time. August. And prior to August 20th, 1999. Um, <laughs> I was a, a, a staff leader in a variety of nonprofit organizations. So when I graduated college, I started my career working in the nonprofit sector. I started in as, as an administrative assistant uh, to an executive director at a suicide prevention center crisis hotline in wow. Miami, Florida. Oh, that was heavy. And I just, you know, was very enamored with the whole business of running a nonprofit. And I went on to pursue my master's degree in human services and my PhD in public administration, all the while working for different kinds of nonprofit organizations. And so I was about 17, and I worked at the, the local level and then had an opportunity after graduate school to work for a national nonprofit doing leadership development um, training in the affordable housing field nationally. Okay. And so I came I went to Baltimore, left Miami, went to Baltimore. That was a that big was, switch. That was crossing that a, bridge. Was a bridge. That was a bridge. <laughs> yes, especially driving from Miami to Baltimore. My dad helped me uh, with my four cats in the back of a oh, RAV4. Talk about so, cats. Yeah, <laughs> that was a bridge. That was a really that was a bridge. And so I, I went to work for that organization and I did that for a couple of years. And um, 
I didn't know anyone in Baltimore, and so another bridge I crossed yes. was how would I meet people socially to have a good experience because yeah. my work, my comp the organization I worked for was in Baltimore, but I traveled a lot for okay. the work that I was doing. Okay, so you didn't really have a base <clears throat> in the have city a base. that you lived in. I did not have a base. And so I answered an ad in a newspaper, and through that met my husband. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that right? That is how oh, we met. Yeah, I didn't realize that. And But before we decided to get married, he offered me the opportunity to leave the nonprofit organization I was working for and open a business. And it was a real bridge because I didn't know him very well. And, you know, we had just started dating. And he asked me this question, if I, could, if I helped you start a business, would you do this? Mm. And I thought to myself, why would you do this for me? That was you a know? big compliment to you. We don't know each other very well. And yeah. he said, you know, no matter what happens, I think we're always going to be friends. And I believe that you can do this. Wow. And Managence Consulting was born. That is incredible. That must make you feel so good that he had that kind of confidence in you, Denise. And he was right. You're, you became man and wife, and you're having a successful business. Together, still. <laughs> together, to day, right. we are in the business together. Way to go, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Could never have done it without his encouragement and support and professionalism all the way through to today. So, Denise, some people who are watching might be thinking that it's time for them to take that step and that leap of faith. You wondered, and you did it anyway, so you were courageous. What do you think made you do that? What made you decide to go ahead and jump? I think at the time, it was a real curiosity okay. of like, can I do this? Mm. And I knew that I could, I knew that I could sell business. I knew that I could design pieces of work and get interest, you know, sell the business. I, w I didn't feel as strong in terms of managing the finances and thinking about the infrastructure of the business, mm -hmm. but I knew that I could deliver the work. And so... So you had confidence. So I had confidence in that. I had a lot of encouragement. So curiosity, confidence, encouragement, and I think help, support, help, mm -hmm. you know, was the thing that, you know, he, Larry was very reassuring and said, we'll figure this out. If you can figure out how to what you want to do and how to sell the work, mm -hmm. we can figure out everything else. Okay. So those were the big things that helped at the time. Okay. So those are good steps. So for the audience, you have to be confident. You have to have support. You have to have courage. But back to the confidence. And sometimes I think, especially as women, we are great at what we do. And then we will have doubt. So you were able to remove the doubt and keep the confidence. And along with the support that Larry gave you, you created what you needed to create to get the business that you wanted. Yes, and I also had someone else who gave me a lot of confidence, and that was my mom. Okay. Yeah, my oh, mom. My mom, oh. to this day, contributes continues to be a great supporter. But she, she was someone who didn't have a lot of opportunity growing up, and I remember her saying to me as a kid. You can do anything you want, you just have to try. Mm. And she pushed, I was shy and introverted, and she pushed me a lot to try different things mm -hmm. and always encouraged me. And so that was, you know, in the back of my mind as well. Okay, okay, that's awesome. Moms. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, important. Very. Now you mentioned that you, you, you have a PhD, you have a lot of education, you got a certification. And I remember you saying that even though you got a certification, you, somebody gave you a book and it gave you some new insights. So I thought that was a really interesting story and I think the audience will too. So share a little um, bit about that. So, so thanks for remembering that. I, <laughs> um, so I, I became an executive coach because I had noticed a little trend in my business that was we were developing good strategic plans and leaders weren't implementing them and yeah. I was worried about I was worried about where that was coming from was yeah. it the product we were delivering or was it something else and someone suggested that I work with an executive coach had never heard of that profession but I worked with a coach for a year and during that time really did a lot of work to transform our business and the way we thought about our business 
but I was very intrigued about the way she was working with me over the course of the year. And so at the end of that year, I enrolled in coaching school <laughs> and started the process of becoming a certified coach because I realized that consulting, for me at least, was too limiting mm. and that coaching opened up some doors that consulting didn't offer. Okay. So I was a new coach and I was at a conference and a coaching conference in Washington DC and on the way out at the uh, walking through the exhibits someone handed me a book and said hey here's a free book you'll really enjoy this <laughs> and I was on my way to the beach for a little holiday and so I took the book I read it in an afternoon and wow. I said to my husband, I need to enroll in that coaching school when I get home. He said, what? <laughs> so I, I, it was a, you know, it, it was the opportunity to explore a whole different uh, component of coaching and leadership, which was thinking about the mindset that we bring to our leadership and how that influences the decisions that we make. So the book written by Bruce Schneider called Energy Leadership Transform Your Life and Your Work from Your from the Core uh. talks about how we how are the mindsets that we choose to bring into our work. Interesting. Mindsets that we choose. That we choose. That are all that are accessible and available to us. We just have to be aware of That's, them. That right there is an interesting awareness. Uh -huh. So I read the book, I went I I took the course, and it, during the course, I took a, a, an assessment called the Energy Leadership Index. Uh, it's a, an awareness building tool. And I was very surprised, because I thought that I was a pretty positive person in terms, of the, in terms of my mindset. And I was really surprised about the insights that that experience gave me mm. about what I, was what I was bringing to the table that was not as positive as it could be. Interesting. Yeah. And so it was very transforming because okay. it just changed my whole perspective. Now, because I, I learned to be more aware of how I was showing up. So that person who handed you that book, I hope that they find this video <laughs> because I wonder if they know what an impact it had on you. And you know what? They saw something in you when they handed you that book. And they probably handed it to a lot of people who never read it. But for you, you read it in one afternoon. So that says a lot about your willingness to grow, first of all. And that's probably one reason you're so successful at helping other people grow. Well, thank you. Yeah, but you mentioned, so let's talk more about that transformation because mm -hmm. you have been able to incorporate what you've learned in this particular coaching program, how to incorporate it into your business, the business of those you help, and your personal life. Yes. Yeah. Tell yeah. us a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah. So, you know, when you, so I, when I got married, I um, inherited a family. Um, two lovely girls that um, were my hu husbands from previous marriages. And I, you know, took the approach of being a friend. And I didn't have really any role models in terms of, you know, how do you jump into a situation with, you know, a six-year-old and a 14-year-old and uh -huh. become their friend. Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> I, it was challenging, and I was... Um, a little domineering, maybe a lot domineering. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling with that. But coaching school gave me a whole new perspective. Mm -hmm. Coaching school and energy leadership gave me a whole new perspective about giving other people responsibility mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. their choices mm -hmm. that I didn't have to make for them. Awesome. And so with my, um, my youngest daughter, it helped me realize that I could have a much better relationship with her if I gave her the responsibility. Rather than take responsibility for her. Yeah, nice. and the decisions that she makes. Mm, okay, and you took the monkey off your back? Absolutely, completely, <laughs> completely. And, you know, it was, it was very transforming. She was, um, you know, in 10th grade at the time. She's 26 and starting her, a PhD program in August. She wow. recently finished her master's degree. She's wow. an elementary school teacher. I see a She's pattern there. <laughs> very accomplished. And we have a good relationship to this day because I just, I stay curious with her. Mm. I ask her her perspective. I don't judge her. I let her choices be her choices. Even if I don't necessarily agree with them, I just can be very supportive of them and 
it's it's worked wonders. That is awesome. Yeah. So not only did it help you to build your business, but also as importantly, even if not more importantly, it helps you to impact your family. Yes. And it sounds like you really have helped give confidence to her and probably the other daughter as well. Because when you let her make the decision, she has confidence that she has the ability to make decisions. Yes. Awesome. I think that's true. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Thank okay. you. Okay. Now, Denise, you've crossed a lot of bridges, and I love talking with you about crossing bridges. You took a big leap of faith about three years ago because you decided to move from the East Coast to the West Coast. Now, most people would say, I can't do that now because I've got a solid business built up. I've got my clients, and I'm going to stay planted because it's working. But no, you and Larry <laughs> decided to take that leap and cross that bridge. So I'm interested, and I think the audience will really be interested too, what made you do it? What made you decide to do it? And since you did it, what obstacles might you have encountered? What challenges have you seen since you did decide to do it? Because again, it's crossing bridges and typically there's peaks and valleys. So tell us about that. Yes, it was definitely, it has definitely been an adventure of crossing bridges for sure. <laughs> so we had wanted to leave the Washington DC area for a while we were a little tired of the cold and snow uh -huh. and we wanted to change of pace okay and we had the choice of north carolina where the our younger daughter is uh or california where our older daughter and her husband had moved we had come to visit them a couple of times we really liked it here uh -huh. and we thought we could do it you know we had a, a 19 well at the time a 16 year old business uh -huh. with credibility referenceability we had worked in other pl we had we have a lot of clients on the east coast but we had worked all over the united states okay. in different projects mm -hmm. and in my mind i thought how hard could it be to develop business with we know our market right. we are very clear what our products and services are how difficult would it be to develop business in this market and mm -hmm. in my mind i thought it would be relatively easy okay and you know i think a couple of things happened um, the pipeline of business on the East Coast continued. Mm. So even though that's nice, it, 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 was, it has <laughs> been very nice. And so even though we had moved, our clients were interested in continuing the, wow. the working relationship. That spoke volumes about what you were delivering. We also had opportunities for new business, and you know, clients didn't seem to care that we I was living here. I do have two part-time staff who are based in Maryland and who I work with virtually. And so it felt, you know, we felt very connected to the East Coast, even though we had come here. Mm -hmm. And I started to do some networking and learn about Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the obstacles I discovered was that while you're working on the East Coast, you're on the East Coast. You're right. not here in California. Right. You know, and, while, and while I was here, I was in my office getting ready for the next trip east. And so I was finding it really challenging to network as much as I probably needed to, uh, to make as many connections as I needed to. Okay. And so the business opportunities weren't <laughs> developing here. Uh -huh. And then one day I was talking with a recent colleague here and she said, well, you know, if you have business on the East Coast and the pipeline is full, just focus on that. Right. Don't worry about uh -huh. what's happening in California. Uh -huh. So, you know, that was relieving in a way because I thought, you know, she has a really good point there. Right. I don't have to worry about right. where the business is coming from. Right. So that was year two. Okay. And now um, another, the third year has passed. Okay. And interestingly enough, another sort of obstacle has been that this third year has been busier um, in other parts of the country than the first two years were wow. with more travel mm. and just more exhausting, mm. not really in the direction that I really wanted to go in. And I've done less networking here in California. Because you've been traveling to the East Coast. Yeah. yeah, more and more. So now as we are approaching the end of our third year, the 
reality is setting in, um, m you know, challenging my health, my well-being, yeah, my that's connection lot. with my family. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot on your body traveling <laughs> from it East is. Coast to West Coast and back and forth. And, you know, every, every, a week, a month. Right. It's a lot of time to be away. It is. And so we've decided that we are going to let go mm. of the pipeline of work. That is another bold on decision. The East Coast. Wow, Denise. So another bridge to cross now. Another bridge to cross. Okay. All right. That is powerful because you talked about you were willing to leave. When you left, the pipeline grew. Yeah. That speaks volumes. And you became so busy that you didn't have time to do business in your backyard. So now it sounds like you have enough confidence, and you're right. You do have so much proof from your clients who continue to work with you. So now you can focus on the local market more. The West Coast now mostly? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're going to continue. We still have clients on the East Coast who we are going to continue to work with. We're going to be doing more virtual work. There you go. Technology. And, and I, will do, I will travel for things that I absolutely need to travel for. So I'm not, I'm not abandoning right. work on the East Coast, but we're going to be looking at ways of doing it differently. There you go. So that I can uh, be physically in California more right. and develop more opportunities. Yeah. And, you know, and you do never know when you, where your opportunities are going to come from. We have a client, a former client on the East Coast who recently referred us to an opportunity here on the See, West Coast. Yeah, yeah. And we're pursuing that now, and awesome. I'm very excited about okay, that. Okay, okay. We're going to have to hear more about that. That's awesome. So, Denise, before we go, there's two other things that I want to talk about. One of them is you clearly really help the organizations that you work with. We had an opportunity, because you're so generous, that we got to provide a workshop to an organization, California Society of Association Executives, a couple months ago. And we talked about leadership with emphasis on listening. You are an excellent listener. Give us an idea about a couple of key themes that you work with your clients on. They keep you, they retain you, they work with you, they don't care that you're hours away and in a completely different time zone. So help us understand one or two key themes that you work with your clients on. You know, I think um, the most important themes for us are where do we look for opportunity? And, and we keep that in our mindset all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we're with our clients, we're always thinking about where's the opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. And we, we, are, we keep an open mind and we design the work that we do. We co-create everything we do in mm -hmm. partnership with our clients mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on where they see the opportunity. So you get their buy-in. Yes. Okay. That's one thing. Um, and the, the second thing is that we really think about how to use our conversations in impactful ways. Mm. Um, Tell us uh, more about that. So Judith Glazer, a few years ago, wrote a book called, uh, called Conversational Intelligence, which is a neuroscience-based framework that she developed in her work over 30 years with corporate leaders mm -hmm. um, on how to build trust. Mm. And she had the opportunity to turn the book into a course and a certification program mm. and I had the opportunity to study with her for really almost three years before mm. she passed away in um, last November. Mm -hmm. She's really revolutionized the way we can think about the impact that our conversations have mm. um, in, the, in the workplace and in life in general mm -hmm. and so I'm now certified in this framework of conversational intelligence and we use it in our work continuously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to have help our clients have a different experience in their work and then to impact the work the way that we work with them okay so you're helping them become more effective and communicating and collaborating with each other so that they can have better dynamics and help their organizations grow, it sounds like. Yes, okay. and it impacts individual leaders as well and the way individual leaders show up mm -hmm. you know, and manage their teams and develop their teams. It, it, you know, mm. Because everything we do happens in conversations. Absolutely. And so the more that we can really leverage our conversations, understanding the neuroscience of them, the better the, our conversations can be. That's powerful. I've heard you use the word elevate. 
So you work to help elevate your clients? Yes, you know, coaching is about taking people to places where they may not even realize that they can go. Okay, and help them cross bridges. Help them cross bridges, exactly. <laughs> and so that's really, that's really what our, you know, our, our mission is about elevating the experience of leaders. We want them to have joy in their their leadership every day because being a leader is hard. Oh yeah, it is. You know, but the more joy you have, the more impact you can have. Absolutely. And you love the fact that you say it starts with conversations because a conversation is two ways. So that the leader when they're being an intentional and an empathetic lead listener, then their employees feel like they care. Yes. Yeah. And it makes a big difference. It does. It does. Denise, you are also, and on top of all the other qualities, you're an author. Yes. So yeah. I asked you to bring your books today. So I want you to share with the audience because they probably want to know what is the book that she wrote, what are the books she wrote, and where can I get them? So share with us about information about your books. Thanks. So our first book was called um, The Nonprofit Organizational Culture Guide, Revealing the Hidden Truths that Impact Performance. And this book is about the understanding the culture of nonprofit organizations and how the culture influences the strategies that organizations uh, develop to advance their missions. Okay. And I co-wrote that book with uh, two uh, colleagues in the Baltimore area, and that's available at Amazon.com. And our recent book called Taking Leadership to the Next Level is a compilation of essays that I wrote over the course of the year uh, with spark questions to help leaders think about their leadership. So it takes my experience as a leader, builds on that, and then asks questions that helps other leaders think about their leadership. I love it. And that has action plans in it. So it asks you a question, then it gives you an idea. So I love it. Denise, Denise we've talked about some excellent topics today. And I am thinking some people probably want to know how to find you. They're probably thinking, I work for an organization, I own an organization, and we could use some help. So where can they find you, Denise? Our website is managence.com. That's okay. M-A-N-A-G-A-N-C-E. Okay, so spell that again because it's a little different than people might think. I'll say it again and spell it. Okay. Managence, M-A-N-A-G-A-N-C-E.com. Okay. And the little story behind our name mm -hmm. is that it's the first half of the word management okay. and the last half of the word performance. Mm. And a dear colleague of, of ours 19 plus years ago who didn't know what I did one day asked me what I did and I explained it and his immediate comeback was, you do managence. I said, what? <laughs> managence? He said, well, you know, Management, performance, put them together, that's what you're all about. Ah. And the name stuck. All right. Okay. That's a great story to go along with the name, too. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Denise, it has been incredible having you here as a guest. Thank you so much for saying yes. I know that you got a lot of nuggets from Denise Hendon, owner of Managence Consulting. And we thank you so much for joining us. And Make it a great day and a great month and continue on with a great year. And until next time, we will see you on Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence.